Hello and welcome back to this uh, Microsystems Fabrication by Advanced Manufacturing Processes Lecture 16. A brief review of the previous lecture, what uh, we had tried to do last time was to design the electrolyte velocity and pressure uh, between electrodes uh, due to, during an ECM operation and we saw that the velocity is uh, actually um, limited by the fact that the amount of heat that is translated by the electrical power coming into the electrolyte is uh, carried away assuming that there is no conductance across the, the tool workpiece surface and uh, the velocity should be designed in a manner so that the overall temperature of the electrolyte does not cross the boiling point. Also what is important is that the velocity is also limited by the pressure scale where the pressure comes due to two factors one is the inertial component which is relatively a lower term particularly because of uh, creepy flows or you know low Reynolds number flows which are uh, executed in the small equilibrium gap that is in question. And so therefore, the pressure component given by the surface forces, the viscous forces have to be matched with uh, the ultimate yield stress of the material on one side. So that is what limits the velocity and the design velocity of the electro uh, light. So uh, what augments the velocity is the fact that the temperature should not go below the, uh, the boiling point and what limits the velocity is the fact that the pressure which is generated because of the viscous effect of this velocity okay, uh, should not go above the ultimate yield stress of the material. So we also sort of try to investigate the various effects of uh, the heat <coughs> and hydrogen generation on ECM process between the electrodes on the electrolyte. And we were looking at some of the causes of surface finish due to the ECM operation including selective dissolution, sporadic uh, breakdown of anodic film, flow separation, formulation of eddies, evolution of hydrogen gas so on and so forth. So we had already seen how two phases in an alloy A and B with different dissolution potentials would have a self roughening effect as opposed to the general self leveling effect of an ECM process just because of the fact that the potential of one phase may be slightly higher over the potential of the other phase. So it was a very interesting uh, case that we analyzed where roughness automatically gets generated because of difference in the dissolution potentials of the two phases. Uh, the other uh, fa you know, uh, fact is about you know uh, the sporadic breakdown of uh, anodic film which we will just about see today and all these different causes varying from 2 to 4 we will try to evaluate today after going through a brief recap of the selective dissolution potential. So here you can see that there are two phases B and A where there is a difference in the potential dissolution potential VDA the dissolution potential of A is lower in comparison to VDB and therefore there is a self roughening where the B phase only gets dissolved when it hits this particular plane. This is just for the sake of repetition that I am doing. So if we really compare both uh, the cases so <coughs> the electric field which is also proportional to the current density because electric field times the conductivity becomes the current density. Uh, actually if you look at this gap as y between the tool and the, uh, the surface A and the available dissolution potential for A is VDA. So V minus VDA <coughs> by y is the electric field across this particular gap if we consider V d A potential or dissolution potential of A and if we consider that of B then the gap reduces to Y minus delta thereby the field becomes equal to V minus V d B by Y minus delta and uh, typically uh, these electric fields should be similar to each other because they are uh, with two equipotential surfaces in question and there should not be really much variation uh, at least at the flat face of this B surface and the flat face of the A surface. We are not considering corners here where the field lines would automatically coil and would produce a considerably varied density here. Okay. So this is how the electric fields of the A part of the surface and the B part of the surface would compare. And from this expression we really can get a value for this delta. So, the delta uh, thus can be <coughs> found out by this expression 1 minus V minus V D B okay, by V minus V D A times 
times of y okay just so algebraic manipulation from this particular equation here and so you can really find out what is the surface roughness if you knew the dissolution potentials of the phase a and b <coughs> excuse me and you are aware of the gap uh, when the two surfaces are in equilibrium so this can be the equilibrium gap so that is what selective dissolution would mean the other very interesting factor which affects the surface roughness is the sporadic breakdown of anodic film. Let us see how it happens. So, the main reason for the sporadic breakdown of the anodic film is the gradual fall, fall in the potential difference between the work surface and the electrolyte in the region away from the machining area. Obviously, uh, because let us say this is the electrode here and there is a certain field which is created in this particular gap. Okay which is represented by these lines of forces. The field is slightly uh, curled around the corners and uh, it is also reasonable to assume that this field here can extend farther away from the tool surface as well. Because field is actually uh, if as it goes away from the tool it varies as a or it falls down as a uh, inverse square of the distance r. So, okay. so, the field varies as a square of distance from the electrode onwards towards the remaining part of the surface, but there does exist a field. right? So, for example, if this is the particular potential function which is available to this surface, it slowly goes down as the distance increases as a square of r, but uh, there does exist some value here. Okay? Like for example, at the point p 1 it may be v p 1, at the point p 2 it may be v p 2, so on so forth. So, there are some finitely existing values of the fields which escape even though the tool is placed at some distance away from the surface. right? And this is all covered with electrolyte because naturally the electrolyte flows around this gap and flows over the surface and everywhere else and it flows into the tool from this entry point here in the center. So, supposing if there is an alloy in this particular region and particularly in the region P 1, there may be a phase where the potential which is available here is greater than the dissolution potential of that particular phase available at P 1. So, there would be selective dissolution at P 1 by obviously, by the reasons shown before. And so, dissolution potential of one phase would ensure that only one phase comes out. So, you can see here this roughness which is created is because maybe one of the phases here in this particular zone or in this particular zone maybe had the available potential v p 1 to be greater than their own dissolution potential. Okay. So, you can call it v d of a phase maybe at p 1 okay. and that came off and because of coming off you have this roughness or tethered surface which results because of that. <coughs> Obviously, if there are corners and bends which are represented by the selective removal of one of the phases, these corners would further lead to the coiling and the curling of the fields. And so, the line density in these points would increase tremendously and because of that there would be more dissolution which is available because of increased line density. So, the field concentration causes the phases to dissolve very rapidly uh, further because of selective dissolution and formulation of these corners, the sharp corners. Okay. So, certainly this is something which is highly undesirable for <coughs> an ECM process and this can be one of the main mechanisms for uh, introducing surface roughness in an ECM, uh, although the ECM is supposed to be a self leveling and a very smooth operation. <coughs> the other important factor which is uh, uh, responsible for the creation of surface roughness is the formulation of eddies and the separation of the flows. If supposing there is a rough surface which has been created because of the selective dissolution of the field due to an electric electrochemical tool, it is always um, proper to assume that there may be a case of local circulation, particularly when the electrolyte is flown in all both the directions like this. So, the electrolyte flows over the surface and there are these cases of local circulations which would exist over such crevices and corners. 
meaning thereby that there are these eddies and vortices which are created close to these corners because of the surface perturbations which the surface is no longer a plane surface. There are selective dissolutions because of which there is a lot of this cornering effect, chamfering effect which is present at various points here. Okay. So, these local circulations are a cause for the debris particles which come out of this zone to keep circulating here without going further. Okay. <coughs> And that may change the local conductivity, because precipitates uh, are one of again the responsible causes for change of the conductivity of the, uh, the medium electrolyte. And eddies and vortices are something that you really do not want in ECM. The more streamlined operation the ECM would have in terms of electrolyte flow, the better it is in terms of uh, surface finish. Okay. But the more there is localization of flows and eddies and separation of flows at certain areas, there may be local precipitate whirlpools which are formulated, which have much more conductivity and therefore, uh, more dissolution and that may create a pitting effect in some of the local zones. So, a great care needs to be designed uh, uh, to be taken in designing uh, the tool surface particularly. Uh, the same thing may happen to the selective dissolution of the tool as well. Okay. The surface may turn out to be rough with uh, operations, if there is an alloy tool which is used. And one needs to be very careful about <coughs> these eddies and flow separations. So, this is another third reason for the surface roughness. Finally, as I already have mentioned before, the evolution of hydrogen gas is pretty critical. And if you can consider this tool workpiece surface, supposing uh, the electrolyte starts flowing from this end into the gap okay, at a certain velocity, and by the time it reaches at the other end here. Okay, uh, there is always an increase in the temperature, and uh, let us say if hydrogen emanates as bubbles into this electrolyte, the concentration local concentration of hydrogen in the electrolyte increases because of which there is a change in conductivity, and the hydrogen may be concentration may be lesser here, but by the time this goes ahead and the hydrogen gets carried away, more and more hydrogen packs off you know to this electrolyte. So, hydrogen concentration is greater here, there is a density gradient. Uh, which is created for the gas which is dissolved and therefore, the conductivity is varied across the length of the work piece even. And because of that again there is a tendency of the conductivity to vary uh, and also simultaneously the current density to vary. So, at one point where the current density may be more because of uh, reduced hydrogen may have a slightly greater dissolution rate in comparison to the point where the current density is lower. Okay. And so, uh, therefore, uh, again this can also result in some kind of a roughness, where some points may be moved uh, or dissolved in a greater pace in comparison to the other points. So, there are two major aspects when we talk about ECM, one is of course, the, <coughs> the tool design okay, uh, and another is the flow design, the, f the system of flow you know. And the tool design is important because of two reasons, one is uh, that the tool shape uh, so desired is exactly the negative replica of the shape that you are wanting to embed or imprint onto a surface. That is the basic principle of an ECM operation. So, particularly in microsystems technology, when we are talking about <coughs> uh, some embedment, uh, some small feature which has to be created on the surface, the exact contouring of the tool is very much needed. So, that the exact negative replica can be produced on the surface at that particular scale. And uh, the other reason is that you know the electrolyte flow that the tool would have would really be uh, creating a lot of effects on the overall material removal rate. So, therefore, the way that the electrolyte is flown, the way that the sides of the tool are insulated, the strengths and fixing arrangements of the insulations onto the tool, they would be of great concern when we want to develop a good ECM process. So, we will look at the first aspect now that is determining a tool shape, so that the desired shape of the job can be achieved for a micro machining or for a machining condition. And in that respect, I would like to <coughs> sort of propose a theory, uh, where uh, we want to theoretically determine what is the tool shape based on a certain function, which is uh, uh, known to be the final shape of the work piece that you would like to. Uh, generate using ECM. So, when a desired shape of the machined workpiece surface is known and uh, we want to somehow map the surface into a tool surface 
and which is possible actually theoretically. I will just show you an approach where theoretically you can determine. Uh, and so, the required geometry of the tool surface for a given set of machining conditions can be achieved very fast based on that. And um, <coughs> the first thing that we need to know here is that the equilibrium gap between the anode <coughs> and cathode <coughs> surfaces can be expressed as G dash is equal to the conductivity times of atomic weight of the material which is dissolved times of the voltage minus over voltage potential which is available for the electrochemical process divided by the density of the material to be removed the lowest valency state of the material and some other parameters like the Faraday constant, the feed rate, supposing it is going at an angle theta. So, if theta is the inclination angle. of the tool W R T with respect to the work piece, and this can be called f cos theta. Okay. <coughs> so, that is how you find out the equilibrium gap as we have seen before and let us actually now assume a certain uh, random tool surface and work, see, work piece surface as represented here. Let us say this is the x y plane and we are talking about a certain shape here of the work piece. Okay. Let us say this is the shape of the work piece. <coughs> which we are kind of aware what this shape would result uh, or what, what would be the final shape which is desirable. So, this is given by the design uh, design team for the component. And uh, we also are aware that this work piece is being fed towards the tool at a feed rate of f. And this is automatically the shape of the tool which is generated by the requirement of this work piece surface which is known to you. So, if we select the you know in the two dimensional sense a point here on the work piece surface let us say p w which is again a function of x w and y w okay, and uh, try to map a corresponding point on this particular surface, the tool surface p t x t y t, we should be able to somehow find out the functional relationship that exists between this point and this point, given the constraints or conditions of the ECM process like the feed, the direction of the feed so on so forth. So, the feed as you know is in this direction, meaning thereby that if we look at uh, a tangent to this particular point, it would assume to have moved at an angle theta with respect to the direction of the feed. Okay. So, we are already aware of the work piece surface. So, let it be defined by a function y equal to phi x. So, there is a relationship between these two coordinates x and y in the it is a sort of uh, uh, non parametric representation of uh, the surface uh, y equal to phi x and we want to determine what this would mean when it gets translated into the tool surface to provide the tool shape. So, when a steady state condition is reached the gap between a point on the work piece
let us say this x w y w point p w and the point on the tool surface be given by a steady state equilibrium gap g e okay, where g e has already been calculated before we know what g e is. It is a function of many things like g e. where the equilibrium gap is a function of many things as you know the atomic weight the available voltage uh, which is there the conductivity the density of the workpiece which uh, material may be iron or copper whatever is being removed or machined so on so forth. So, <coughs> if you look at the positional relationship between these coordinates x w y w and x t y t. So, the x t is displaced forward displaced uh, from the x w by an amount g sin theta. where g is this gap here between p w and p t right. And uh, if we compare the position coordinates y w and y t, <coughs> the y w is forward displaced from the y t by a gap g cos theta, meaning thereby we have two equations here x t minus x w which is g sin theta, let us call it equation 1 and y t minus or y w minus y t which is g cos theta let's call it equation 2. We already know the value of g, g is actually k a v minus delta v divided by rho z f cos of theta. <coughs> where we assume that the surface is moving along this line p w p t towards the tool surface at an angle theta. So, these are very generic form of uh, a surface of a, multi, uh, a, a, a certain functional shape uh, to be replicated in terms of the tool surface. So, we are mapping from the workpiece surface to the tool surface by using simple mathematics. So, here <coughs> let us say if we wanted to uh, just write everything in terms of the new value of g that we had obtained. So, y t becomes equal to y w minus k a <coughs> v minus delta v by rho z f times of small f the cos theta goes away, uh, which is actually nothing but y w minus lambda by f. If you may remember this term here was actually equivalent to the lambda okay, when we did the kinematics and dynamics of the ECM process. And the x t here can be related to the x w by the term k a v minus delta v divided by rho z f times of f times of tan of theta, right? because this was cos theta and then uh, the x w <coughs> was displaced. The x w was displaced um, backwards from the x t by uh, the term g sin theta. <coughs> so, therefore, uh, if you just convert everything here in terms of lambda, you can get x w plus lambda by f tan theta. Okay. So, we make this equation 3 and this equation 4. <coughs> so, you already know that there is a functional relationship between the x w and the y w which exists. Okay. So, y w is function phi of x w in the workpiece side and tan theta can be estimated as the slope d y w by d x w at the point p w x w y w okay, <coughs> where x t equals x w plus lambda by f 
times of tan theta which is d y w by d x w. Since the work surface geometry is given by uh, this relationship the d y w by x w actually equals to d phi x w by d x w. <coughs> So, a little bit looking at a little more fundamental way, if this is the surface that we are trying to interrogate, which is actually the, the work piece surface and this is the point P w that we are trying to use to find the or, or trying to map into the tool surface. At this particular point, the tangent which happens here okay, is really in this direction. right? this is the tangent at this point. And uh, <coughs> we already know that <coughs> the way that the surface would move is at an angle of theta with respect to the vertical direction. So, if I were to just uh, find out whether tan theta is d w by d y w by d x w here, uh, you see if this is theta, this becomes 90 minus theta. Okay, and this becomes theta, right? So this tan of theta is actually dyw by dxw, right? And so therefore we can safely assume that uh, g tan theta can be expressed as xt equal to xw plus lambda by f d y w by d x w right tan theta this is the g g tan theta. <coughs> and similarly, we already have the equation 3 s uh, plotted earlier where we are trying to say y w as a function of x w is nothing but y t plus lambda by f. <coughs> So, if this functional relationship exists, <coughs> between the y w and the x w <coughs> and we have a relationship of y w with y t and x t with x w, we can actually write down that y w which is y t plus lambda by f is functionally connected in the same manner to x w's value here which is x t minus lambda by f times of d y w by d x w. So, if you really know the slope here then it should not be a problem to map the x w y w to x t y t as available here in this functional relationship. So, therefore, <coughs> the whole uh, essence that is involved in all this is to somehow be able to write this d y w by d x w meaning thereby this is d phi x w by d x w in terms of x t and y t. So, then this whole equation can be converted into all x t's and y t's and the function therein which would be plotted would be a map of x w into y w x w y w into x t y t. So, therefore, the overall representation of a tool surface provided we already have a functional relationship between the work piece surface as y w is phi of x w is given by phi x minus lambda by f some function okay, in terms of x t and y t of x y these are all tool sides minus lambda by f. <coughs> so, this is the whole mapping equation from the work piece surface to the tool surface.
now supposing if we assume a functional relationship of the type y equal to let us say a plus b x plus c x square for the workpiece surface and we want to find out what is the mapping into the tool surface. As we already know the map is provided by y t equal to phi x t minus lambda by f some function of x t y t which is nothing but the slope d y w by d x w right minus of lambda by f. <coughs> so, let us try to determine this and try to find out how this is related to uh, some function of x t and y t. So, we already know that d y w by d x w is actually equal to b plus c x w right and uh, we are aware that the x w or x t actually is equal to the x w plus lambda by f times of d y w by d x w which means it is equal to x w plus lambda by f times of b plus c x w. Okay. So, therefore, we can either substitute the value of x w in this equation to find out what x t would be in terms or what this would be in terms of x t standalone. So, let us suppose that there is a function y on the workpiece surface which is related to x on the tool surface, uh, tool surface by the quadratic equation a plus b x w plus c x w square. Now, we want to find out how to map it from the tool uh, from the workpiece surface into the tool surface. So, we first find out what d y w by d x w is let this be equal to some value i right and this is actually it can be represented as b plus twice c x w. We already from our previous formulation for x t and x w are very well aware that x t is related to x w by the relation x t equal to x w plus lambda by f times of d y w by d x w. So, the whole uh, effort some th some somehow should be to actually convert this whole thing in terms of tools I mean tool side coordinates x t and y t. So, we can write this as x w plus lambda by f times of i remember we have taken this d w d y w by d x w as i and so very easily we can see here that uh, if supposing we write x w in terms of i it becomes twice c x w is i minus b or x w becomes equal to i by 2 c minus b by 2 c right and if we put this value here we get the value of x t as x t equal to i by 2 c minus b by 2 c plus lambda by f times of i. Okay. So, obviously, <coughs> this would mean that uh, if we multiply the whole thing by 2 c, we have 2 c x t equals i minus b plus lambda by f times of 2 c times of i or 
and the value of i in terms of all x t comes out to be b plus twice c x t divided by 1 plus twice c lambda by f. Okay. So, that is how you can formulate d x w by d y w by d x w. So, if I were to represent this i back into uh, the formulation for uh, y, you already know that y t in this particular case is related to the x t as y t equal to phi function phi of x t minus lambda by f times of i minus lambda by f. Okay. And uh, this really means that this coefficient x t becomes equal to x t minus lambda by f times of the i value that has been deciphered before as b plus twice c x t divided by 1 plus twice c lambda by f. Okay. So, minus lambda by f. And then of course, you already know that y t therefore, is written as a function of phi here, which means it is a plus b times of this argument, which has been formulated. So, we are mapping now the function. Okay. plus c times of x t minus lambda by f b plus twice c x t divided by 1 plus twice c lambda by f square minus lambda by f. In other words, if you simplify this expression here, this would be coming out as a plus b x t plus c x t minus lambda by f minus lambda by f times of b plus twice c x t square divided by 1 plus twice c lambda by f. Okay. <coughs> so, that is how you can map a quadratic function on the workpiece surface to a tool surface. So, in this is just a generic representation of if suppose the surface is defined by a function what would happen. Now, if you look at uh, the theory that uh, is associated with the cat designing process the CAD designing also looks into local functions like this and tries to fit some of the uh, formulations like Bezier curve or uh, let us say you know spline fits between either two points or many points. And this somehow has to be topologically mapped into the corresponding negative work piece surface. So, the best way to do it is to keep in mind the equilibrium gap, keep in mind that the surface is going at a certain angle to this. Uh, uh, you know tool surface and topologically map it by a function mapping from of the x y on the workpiece surface to the tool surface. For a certain simple uh, equation like a quadratic equation it has been demonstrated here, but then if there is a complex uh, function which is used for fitting contours or you know uh, complex contours or topologies that function can also be mapped. Okay. So, the idea is that the whole design that is there uh, of the work piece as per the requirement of the work piece have to be designed in bits and pieces and this each uh, can be represented by either a group of functions or just a function or some of them are just linear and then you simply map those points uh, onto the corresponding tool surface and obtain that way the tool surface. So, the tool design can be arrived at theoretically. So, that is a, a pretty good aspect of the ECM process that you can actually develop a tool surface exact negative of what is there on a <coughs> uh, complex design uh, of the requirement of the work piece. So, with uh, this in mind uh, we just try to do a numerical problem try to solve a numerical problem here as you see here uh, the geometry of a work piece with single curvature is given okay, and this uh, geometry is given by the equation y plus 10 y is equal to 10 plus 0 0.3 x minus 0 0.05 x square. Uh, you know that these are values in centimeters and the process data is uh, that the applied potential is 15 volts over voltage which is needed is 0 0.67 volts. There is a feed velocity of 
seven five millimeters per minute, and uh, is given in typically the minus y direction. And the work material is copper. Electrolyte conductivity is about zero point two ohm inverse centimeter inverse, and we have to determine the equation of the required tool surface uh, geometry. So. Uh, once again, I would like for the sake of repetition to, to reiterate this point that a CAD geometry is a complex uh, system, which is created out of many such functions, which are standard functions, either representing represented by non parametric or parametric equations. Uh, some linear connections between uh, the many complex functions and then some fits. The fits are because sometimes you need to really express uh, very closely a complex topology and there is uh, no other choice, but to force fit a sort of function like maybe the Bezier uh, function or the, uh, uh, the B spline function or just a normal cubic Hermitian uh, function uh, polynomial uh, to, to in a manner that by knowing just by slopes on both ends or the or the different or maybe one or two points or maybe all the points you can try to develop a fit that way. Okay. So, that fit then uh, the standard functions which are already there representing the surface and the linear functions may very safely be mapped topologically to develop the exact negative replica. So, the purpose of all this theoretical analysis is to ultimately arrive at a tool surface given a split up CAD model of a work piece surface. So, let us look at this, this is a very simplistic case you have already defined the single curvature uh, of the equation uh, given by this quadratic form. And uh, we want to find out that for copper, uh, we assume let us say a monovalent state which is coming out. Okay. So, we are assuming z to be plus 1, the atomic weight of copper uh, the work material is 3.757 grams and uh, the rho here the density function here is actually 8.96 grams per centimeter cube and the value of f here is 96500 coulomb okay and we want to find out provided the feed is given to be 0 0.75 millimeters per minute or in other words 0 0.00125 centimeters per second we want to find out what the uh, g value is, which is lambda by f and lambda uh, can be represented as k a v minus delta v divided by rho z f, uh, where these uh, terms are all uh, as you have done many times meaning their own uh, you know they, they are encompassing their own definitions. So, the k is the conductivity is given to be for the electrolyte 0 0.2 ohm inverse centimeter inverse. So, we have 0 0.2 times of the atomic weight of copper 63.57 times of um, the total potential which is available minus the over voltage which is 15 minus 0 0.67 divided by the rho value which in this particular case uh, is about uh, 8.96 it is copper times of monovalent state. So, plus 1 times of 96500 coulombs. Okay. So, that is how <coughs> the lambda is and uh, this would come out to be about 2.11 10 to the power of minus 4 centimeter square per second. Of course, the lambda by f uh, can be 2.11 10 to the power minus 4 by 12.5 10 to the power minus 4 centimeter. And this uh, 0.169 centimeter then comes out to be the equilibrium gap y e or g e whatever you may think appropriate and this gives us a basis of plotting this functional relationship between y w and x w into y t and x t. So, that uh, let us now have a look uh, at uh, the final formulation. So, for the work piece side you know that phi x w is related to the y w by the equation 10 plus 0 0.3 x w minus 0 0.05 x w square and uh, we know that the final tool surface geometry as we have already derived before for a quadratic equation.
can be represented as y t equal to 10 plus 0 0.3 times of x minus 0 0.169 times of 0 0.3 times of 0 0.1 x divided by 1 minus 0 0.1 times of 1.0.169 okay minus of 0 0.05 times of square of this argument. So, this is that argument value if you may remember which was including the slope and uh, which was you know uh, including the slope in terms of the x t and the y t value okay. And uh, so, this minus 0 0.05 <coughs> to the same argument 0 0.169 0 0.3 minus 0 0.1 x divided by 1 minus 0 0.1 times of 0 0.169 okay the square of that value minus 0 0.169 which is the lambda by f or the equilibrium gap term uh, in this expression. And so, if you solve all this you get a relationship between the uh, x t and the y t as x y t is a 9.815 times a plus 0 0.8 three one five x t minus zero point zero five one x t square where both x t and y t are in centimeters. Okay. So basically this is a very good uh, methodology of uh, giving a sort of uh, optimum tool shape for a single curvature uh, which is already given by a quadratic equation for the workpiece shape. So, I think today we are kind of at the end of uh, the lecture, we have uh, learnt how to derive uh, some of the very fundamental aspects of uh, velocity uh, of uh, the electrolyte while moving through the gap. And we have also learnt that how critical it is because you know it will essentially be related to the pressure which would be a determinant of the maximum level of the velocity and on the minimum level of the velocity would be determined by the temperature requirements uh, which would ensure that there is no boiling action. We tried to apply uh, this uh, fundamental problem to see what are the surface finish related defects which come in an ECM process. Thereby, we learnt a lot of uh, you know different corollaries of the ECM process which happens like for example, sporadic breakdown of the anodic film or for example, um, the, uh, the flow separation or the eddies or the hydrogen gas generation which changes local conductivities and is always a uh, problem with the ECM because the local roughnesses would tend to change and the local current densities because of that would be uh, higher and you can have selective dissolution which creates further problems by coiling the electric fields. You can have uh, a case where more hydrogen is generated because of which the conductivity goes up or the, the, the flow separation or the eddy is thereby meaning the local precipitates get deposited at different uh, places where the local conductivity changes would result in more or less current densities. Okay. So, these are some of the very prominent uh, problems which are available with the ECM system and the prominence goes high as you do micro system fabrication with such ECM processes. Uh, we also try to determine the tool shape where uh, uh, we investigated how uh, you can topologically map one tool surface to other. The other aspect of tool is the electrolyte flow design which we will of course, try to complete in the next lecture. Because uh, the way that you insulate the tools uh, edges, the way that you create uh, uh, a conduit for the flow of the electrolyte from the tool onto the workpiece zone decides a lot of uh, machining parameters for the electrochemical process as such. And so, I would like to investigate these one by one in the next lecture. Thank you.